We got the baby sleeping in the back, so hopefully it doesn't wake up. <laughs> hey folks, you want to join our video? <laughs> hey guys, welcome to our channel. Thank you for being here today. Today we are going to share our financial journey. So in one year, we were able to pay off all our debt, which was about $22,000, pay for the renovation and building of our tiny house, all in cash for $17,000, and buy a new car, well, new to us, for $8,900. So today we wanted to share with you how we did it. Just backing up a little bit, when we first got married, I was still a junior in college, and Luke had already graduated and I had racked up about $22,000 in student loans. So while Taylor was finishing her junior and senior year of college, she was also working at an elementary school while I was working those two years at a Christian school. So neither of us made a lot of money during that time. <laughs> um, so looking back, a lot of how we were able to pay off our debt and be able to get a new car and build this house was a lot because we were just lived really simple and we were just super frugal. So now we're gonna get into like the how to, how to set yourself up for a better financial future and pay off your debt. And the first thing that we would recommend 100% without fail is to tithe. Now, if you don't know, the tithe is the first 10% of all of your income and it goes to the local church. And ever since we have had jobs, we've both tithed and since we've been married, we've tithed and we can vouch that it is honestly the best thing you can do for your finances. The Bible is clear in Malachi 3.10, it says, Bring the full tithes into the storehouse, there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And we have just seen over and over again that as we've tithed, as we've given the first 10%, to the local church. The other 90% is just so much more blessed and it feels like it's multiplied. Otherwise, I feel like you're walking around with a backpack with holes in it. Like you're not really sure where your money is going. You just feel like you're losing it. And something that our pastor often says is a lot of people say that they can't afford to tithe. You know, maybe you barely have enough to pay all your bills and put food on the table for your kids, but it's actually the tithe that breaks the curse off of your finances. And it's the only point in the Bible that God tells us to test him because it really, really does work. The next thing that we'd recommend doing is tracking every single penny you both make and spend. We used an app back when we first got married called Debit and Credit. And so what we did is we categorized and manually entered everything that we both made and spent. And that was really helpful for us to be able to know exactly where our money was going and for us to kind of accurately know how quickly we could pay off debt and build this house and buy a car and all that. So along with tracking every penny that you spend, something that we would recommend is to live simply and to live within your means. Something that Dave Ramsey says, and we have watched a ton of Dave Ramsey, especially in those first couple of years, is to live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. So in that season of trying to tackle debt, maybe cut back a little bit or a lot of it. <laughs> Don't eat out as much. Make your coffee and tea at home. Eat simple meals. Okay. Try and find ways to save money and, and put as much as you can toward that debt because even though we were only in debt for a little bit in the beginning of our marriage, it still just feels like this heaviness over you. And once you just get it all done with, you just feel so much better. And two, it's not about the big expenses. Usually it's about the small sacrifices over time. The next thing that we'd recommend is to tackle debt first. Now, Dave Ramsey talks about putting a thousand dollar emergency fund away, but after you do that, instead of just buying more things and getting more debt, it's really a wise idea just to go ahead and pay everything off. So we didn't have a lot of money um, when we first got married and we had some cash sitting in the bank and it was kind of hard to just take all that cash and just throw it at this $22,000 student loan debt. But now that we look back, we're really glad that we don't have that debt just hanging over our heads. And we're glad that we just got it over with and now kind of we're over here on the other side. Mm -hmm. One statistic is that the average American um, lives paycheck to paycheck. And so that's something that we're 
hoping that in this video we can just help inspire people to get out of debt and really just get out of the rhythm of just living from one paycheck to the next paycheck. And one of the things that really helped inspire me was this book called The Millionaire Next Door. And it really talks about your average millionaire isn't really somebody that you would necessarily think would be a, the millionaire. They're people that are your junkyard owners, your garbage truck drivers. They're people that just are really wise with their money and they just save and invest a large portion of what they make. And so those are principles that we just live by so that like Dave Ramsey says, we can live like nobody else today, so later we can live and give like nobody else. So fast forwarding to today, we have now upgraded both of our cars. We bought used cars in cash. Our house is totally paid for and we have no debt. We still tithe everything that we make, 10% to the local church, and we no longer use the debit and credit app. We just felt like it wasn't really necessary anymore. Instead, what we use is a Google Sheet where we have all of our budgets listed out in categories, household, baby supplies, groceries, personal items, etc. And anytime we spend something, we will add that in the note in the Google Sheet and then tally it up at the end of the month. That way we know where our money is going. And if there's anything that we want to spend above our budgets, for example, new camera equipment or camping equipment, like the tent we just bought, didn't necessarily budget for that, We'll always communicate in advance so that the other person isn't surprised. <laughs> so we have Dave Ramsey to thank for a lot of the inspiration and the materials um, from his podcast and his uh, YouTube channel and following along with his baby steps. Thank you, Dave Ramsey, for helping us get to where we are today. Honestly, the only thing that we kind of divulged from uh, Dave Ramsey <laughs> is with our credit cards. So we do have one credit card. Uh, our first one was to Lowe's and that was to get the 5% savings to build this house. So we were able to save about $500 or so from the $10,000 plus dollars we spent at Lowe's at the time. And since then, we have gotten a few more credit cards and it's nice to be able to both build our credit while getting some nice points. But but one of the things that we do to make sure that we don't give the credit cards a penny is we pay off our credit cards once a week. And so I just go every single weekend, I just go and pay them off. And that helps us to also just keep track of how much that we're spending on our credit cards and make sure that our balance doesn't get too high. So really the next goal that we have is we really want to, in a few years, be able to get a bigger house. And so that's what we're saving for. And that's kind of our, our next step of our financial journey is putting our, our savings from living in this house um, to one day be able to put towards a bigger house someday. So that the bubbles can have his own room. So in closing too, I think that we're never meant to be tied down to our money. In Luke 16, 13, Jesus talks about how you can't serve both God and money. And honestly, I think it's the tithe that really breaks that off, that you can fully serve God and not be a slave to money. And I can honestly say that we rarely ever worry about money. I think it's actually a statistic that most marriages end in divorce because of money. And we've maybe like fought about money like a handful of times. We just talk about it, we're honest about it, we keep budgets, we know where our money is going, and there's just such a freedom in that. And I want you to experience that too. <laughs> also in Matthew chapter 19, there's a rich young ruler that goes to Jesus and asks him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to follow the commandments, you know, you shouldn't murder and all that. And he says, I've done all these things. What, what else must I do? And Jesus replied, sell everything that you have and give it to the poor. And the rich young ruler walked away very sorrowful because he had many possessions. One way of looking at that scripture, and I believe it's Jesus wasn't concerned about him being blessed and having things. He was more concerned about his heart and those things having him. And he knew that his heart wasn't in the right place. And so we believe that God wants us to be blessed and have nice things. He just doesn't want those nice things having us. And so a modern day example of nice things having us is by having debt. And I think if we stay out of debt and keep our hearts pure and focus on what's most important, we can really live a free and fulfilled life that Jesus intended us to have. So all that to say, we hope this was encouraging for you guys. We hope that our story and what we have used was an inspiration to you. And let me know in the comments down below, 
some ways that you have used maybe to get out of debt or if you're still in that journey, how you're trying to live more simply and live within your means, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, we will catch you guys in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for being here today with Luke. <laughs> you know like when you're like trying not to laugh, but it's hard, so it just makes you laugh. Okay, we're gonna do this. So while Taylor was finishing up her, <laughs> oh my gosh, Taylor. <laughs> so while Taylor was finishing her junior and senior year of college, oh my gosh. <laughs> I tried so hard. <laughs>